Happy Halloween, Heat Seekers. Are you ready for some spooky good IDP pickups? Because we got them for you. As you can tell, I am rejoined by the great man, the myth, the Craig. He's going to help us out. As always, give us some great IDP waiver wire pickups. We're going to start with linebackers. Craig, what are we doing here? First guy up we have here is a guy that started off the season well, Willie Gay Jr., and he got suspended for an incident back in January. People assumed something was coming, but he got a four-game suspension from that. He returned in week seven to four solos and four assists. They were on a bye this past week, so he's probably still on waiver wires all over the place, but he came back to a 57% snap share after ending 92% week two before that suspension. So he's a guy that's probably going to get close to that full level of playing in time next to Nick Bolton. So he's one guy to definitely go out there and grab. Another one is Christian Harris. He's a rookie out of Alabama for the Houston Texans. So dynasty leagues, he's not really going to be available. Probably he was a pretty high draft pick, but in redraft leagues, this is only his second game that he's had so far. He's going to play his third game, but in the second game, week eight, he led all linebackers on the Texans with 100% snap share, five solos and two assists leading into that loss season again for them. So he's probably going to be getting some run here now that he's healthy and being on that defense. They love to get those two linebackers, whoever starting tackles with the way they funnel into there. So he's a good one. Next two are guys with checkered histories for IDP managers. One of them is Jalen Smith, now on the New York Giants for a second stint. It's not really for this week because the Giants are on by, of course. It doesn't help you. But if you look at it, his snap shares have been going up. He maxed out at 84% this past week. And mm -hmm. he's had weeks of six, six, three, four, and seven combined tackles as they're trying to figure out that linebacker position for the Giants. And with a 63% oh, total snap share across there. So he seems to be one of the guys that they're more relying on that defense. So again, the guy that's probably going to be useful just in tackle heavy leagues because he really doesn't get you any sort of big plays. But after the bye week, if you need to grab someone coming up here, he's a nice guy. And then Kenneth Murray, much beleaguered guy that we've talked about on the IDP show before and probably never going to live up to his draft capital. But he has at least three solos and four combined tackles each of the past four weeks. He's had a 68% snap share on the year, which isn't too bad. And the Chargers are coming off a bye, going to play the run-heavy Atlanta Falcons. So I think he's in a good spot to continue that tackle production anyway. I almost feel like the way that we have him listed is my thoughts on which ones I would want most. Like, I think I would want to go grab Willie Gay most of any of these. Jalen Smith has had some really nice production at points. And then Harris is just a wild card, which for me, I like to go get those. I wonder if he can be a high ceiling type guy, as opposed to Kenneth Murray, who we see what the floor is, yeah. but neither one of us have been super, super high on him. So just for food for thought, this is this would be my priority all the way down. Would you be on the same page? Yeah, I probably have Christian Harris second behind Willie Gay. And depending on how it goes, if Christian Kirksey doesn't end up seeing the field as much. He was down to 84% this past week as they start bringing other newcomers in there. And again, it's a rebuilding team. They're probably going to start rotating in some younger guys. So he mm -hmm. might end up being the 1B to Willie Gay's 1A, but those are the two priority ones for me. Oh, for sure. All right, so moving on to defensive backs. We, as always, have a CB to throw in there for you for those cornerback-specific leagues. I know there are a few of you degenerates out there like us. Otherwise, we've got some safeties to help you out. What are we doing here, Craig? One of them, it's injury contingent. Jabril Peppers, he had a nice day with Kyle Duggar, a surprise inactive with an ankle issue. He ended up with a 68% snap share, five solos, three assists, and a tackle for a loss. If Kyle Duggar plays, he's probably not really viable because Adrian Phillips is the other guy. He had an 81% snap share. If you want to call one of them a full-time save with those numbers, it was him. But they're going to be playing the Colts coming up here who give up the fifth most points to opposing safeties. He's going to be in a great spot to repeat that sort of success. And we know he gets used all over the field. He's one of those Swiss Army Knife type of players that Bill Belichick loves to have there. But if the other two safeties are playing, he's probably not going to get you that snap share to be worthy. So pay attention to that. Along the same lines of Kenneth Murray, we got your defensive back version here in Rodney McLeod. He has fantasy value in that he has 100% snap share from week three on. He has at least four combined tackles in every game, and they're playing the Patriots. You just talked about that with Jabril Peppers. Patriots give up the seventh most points to opposing safeties. So he's going to have that safe floor by week fill-in, injury fill-in type of guy that isn't going to excite you. But if you want some tackles, you're not going to get a zero from the safety position. He's a good one. Next guy is really interesting, Miles Hartsfield 
for the Carolina Panthers. He's a cornerback on some sites. He's a safety on others. But from week four on, he's had a 98.4% snap share and averaged five solos and one assist. So for a cornerback position, that's huge, but it also viability with that safe floor with safety position. Kind of see where you need to play him. If you need to play him at all, cornerback's the best. But in a pinch, he's getting you points too. He can be a safety fill-in. And then next guy, a guy that we talked a little bit about, not a whole lot because we don't talk about cornerbacks a whole lot in general, but Zion McCollum for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's a rookie, fifth-round pick out of Sam Houston State. He flew off the sort of map onto people's radars. Not that's an actual euphemism, just something I made up. But anyway, he had a 10 out of 10 relative athletic Ooh. score. The guy's crazy athletic. In the past two weeks, he's had a 100% snap share at cornerback for Tampa Bay, and he's had combined seven solos, two assists, and a pass deflection. They play the Rams coming up here. Rams can't run the ball. Teams don't run that ball that well against Tampa Bay. It's not the wall it used to be. But the Tampa Bay is going to make them throw the ball. Not that the Rams have any problem throwing the ball. We'll see if Cooper Cup plays or not. But either way, I think they're going to be throwing that ball. And that's going to get you some nice points from the cornerback position there. Yeah, this group of guys feels very much like we are now at week nine and we're scraping for guys that are have been producing we're almost points chasing over the last few weeks which guys are showing out at least remotely but the carolina panthers have been really fun to watch since they traded yeah. away most of the big names now you're starting to see some of these smaller younger guys and even think about a guy that's been so up and down like a Derek brown he looks better the last month as opposed to any other time in matt rules tenure so definitely an interesting group of defensive backs but ones that are all producing yeah, the Peppers one, though, will definitely be interesting because Kyle Duggar still the safety to own on that roster yeah. if he's healthy. And that's a big if right now. All right, so round it out. Let's talk defensive linemen. Obviously, we got a DT play in there for you as well. What, what say you about these guys? Yeah, defensive line is always the hardest to try to figure out because they just, generally speaking, don't score as many points, as many big play potentials because they take on those blockers up front. Uh, Peyton Turner's a guy, he was out four weeks for a chest injury after week four. He came back and he's splitting time, got a lot with younger guys, second year player. But he's been more productive than Marcus Davenport, who he's splitting time with across from Cameron Jordan. Uh, the past week, he had two solos, two assists, two tackles for a loss, and two sacks against the Raiders. You're not going to be seeing that every week, but that's a team that is going to have to be playing the players that are producing for him because they're in the hunt for the playoffs. They're actually showing out well on offense. Same thing with that defense and his playing time. It was his highest snap share of the season coming off an injury at 57%. So I think that's going to continue to go up and they're going to get their big playmakers on the field there for the defense. The opposite here, we got Dietrich Wise, who's a little bit older of a standby for the New England Patriots. He's got the highest roster ship, I think, of anyone we've talked about this year, which is in the 20%, but that still isn't crazy high for IDP leagues. He's got an over an 80% snap share, how long to go with 18 solos, 11 assists, five sacks, four tackles, four loss, two forced fumbles, and two pass deflections. Colts give up a lot of points to opposing defensive ends, and he has at least three combined tackles in all but one game. So he gives you a nice floor with a pretty high ceiling with those big plays too. Speaking of a high ceiling, the guy that had been injured, Leonard Williams, I was surprised. He was under 10% in, on ESPN and 2% on Yahoo for roster ship. He didn't do a whole lot once he came back from injury the first two weeks, but he had a great game against Seattle with five solos, three assists, a tackle for a loss, and a sack. Same thing with Jalen Smith there on bye this week, but even out of those two, Leonard Williams should be rostered in pretty much every league. The guy was a top 10 tier defensive lineman last year, so if you can get a guy like that for your defensive line position, even if it's your flex fill-in, your, your third defensive lineman, that would be an amazing position to be in because the guy can rack up pressure, tackle for a loss in sacks, and the defense we know has been playing well overall this year. And finally, a defensive tackle that I talked about in one of my articles this offseason as a dynasty buy that really hasn't lived up to it. He's a nose tackle, so I was never really expecting enormous numbers here. But Greg Gaines, he's got six solos, nine assists, two tackles for a loss, and one sack playing next to Aaron Donald. He's only had really two good weeks. As we mentioned, the Rams are playing Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay gives up the six most points to opposing defensive tackles. They had to rely on running the ball more, given the sort of ineptitude of that offense and that Rams defense still has big time playmakers. They're still going to get pressure. We see that every week with Floyd and Donald, some of the other guys there. So they're going to get in Brady's yep. face. Those are going to be guys drawing attention, leave someone like Greg Gaines open. So if you're looking for a deeper defensive tackle play, I do. Yeah. And of these, the wise one is 
interesting to me just because the Indies turn to Sam Ellinger, and even if they – so you have a young quarterback who's going to be trying to run around a lot, and that tends to open himself up to getting hit, strip sack, fumbles, things like that. So Wise is a is an interesting play that could be a boom hit this week for you. But, yeah, Gaines will be a fun one as well just because of the position he's in and the team he's facing, and they're on the rocks. They're struggling. So these are all good, very good options. And obviously, Leonard will, Williams will be a next week good option, but you could get him this week. That's even better. If yeah. you guys have questions specifically about your IDP rosters, don't forget rotohe.com slash discord. You can talk to Craig and I live in our discord. We add people on the regular. We are constantly seeing more and more people join up. So come talk IDP and thank you guys. We'll see you next week for week 10.